welcome to Just Read It. Um, we review books, and today we're going to review The Memory Palace, which is a memoir written by Mira Bartok, and she writes about her experience with her mother who uh, suffered from schizophrenia. And with me uh, today is uh, Pamela Penn uh, Pennington, and she is a poet and sort of spiritual poet. She uh, writes a lot like uh, Gabron. And uh, also with me is Caroline Miller, and she writes uh, gothic novels. I'm Susan Stoner, and I write historical mysteries of the Pacific Northwest. So, uh, Pam, usually what we do is we start with the guest. Oh, how lovely. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoyed this book. I thought it was um, very telling. I don't think she made anything up. I felt like the entire thing was very authentic. She really felt, made me feel very empathetic with her. I felt like she was really opening it up to the world as to what it feels like to deal with someone who has schizophrenia. And it was very believable. I, I enjoyed it very much and, and would read it a second time even. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, it probably would bear mm -hmm. Pam a second reading because um, I think the first time round you're just so, if you're not used to this world, so shocked. And our viewers should know this is the story of a young woman whose mother was a concert pianist, isn't that yes. right, Pam? Yes, yes. Uh, who got schizophrenia at 19. Which is a common age. And uh, became a threat to her two children, so that the children had to literally run away from her and disappear out of her life, until uh, Ms. Bartok had an accident, uh, lost her memory, and then went back to try to find her mother and reconnect. And maybe you could tell us about the beautiful ending, how that ends. Well, when, when they finally did reconnect, I think it was rather sad because it was at the end of her mother's life. Yes. She had cancer and she was in, you know, not hospice, essentially the end stages of life. Mm -hmm. And her reminis reminiscences <laughs> of life with her mother and that, that chaotic life that she had gone through of trying to either live with her mother or stay as far away as possible. But when her mother did pass, I thought it was really precious that she now has this this goal of trying to make people more aware of what it's like to have schizophrenia in the family and what it's like to live with someone who's schizophrenic and, not, and feel that angst of living in that world and, you know, for that person who has schizophrenia. And I think that is the real value of the book, especially for someone who uh, is totally unfamiliar with schizophrenia and how absolutely out of control it can be. And I think the other thing is that it really drives home the fact that for most schizophrenics, um, the people that they are the most dangerous to are their own families. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, um, I think it's a real good way to begin to learn about schizophrenia. That said, I, I did have some problems with the book. And um, one of the problems I had with it is uh, uh, the author was very much um, guilt-ridden because she had cut herself off from her mom. Um, and I had trouble understanding that because I didn't really get a sense of the wonderfulness of her mother. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you heard about the things her mother did that was, you know, schizophrenia related, but the author, just by her own writing, was a very talented, very successful person who made friends easily mm -hmm. and was well liked by other people. That Some of that had to come from the mother, but I just couldn't feel the mother as a person. More I saw her as, you know, um, it, just well, some... Well, well, maybe you don't have to. Let, let me share a scene with you that I thought was the crux of the book for me, who's never really interfaced with someone with schizophrenia. As a children, we all run away from our parents, you know, and then they come looking for us, and then that reassures us, and we know that we're home. And there's that wonderful scene where the mother takes uh, the, uh, the uh, Maria, my Martok, yeah. to the museum. And uh, the museum closes, 
and they've lost contact. And so this child, do you remember that saying, mm -hmm. she's alone in the museum? The angst of a 10-year-old child being without her mother, she runs out into the street, they take her out into the street, and there's her mother frantic, at it, and then, then they embrace. Now that's motherhood. And then very early on, this mother is gone. There's a whole new person. And so you have, the museum for me reflects that loss. But there is no find until the end of the book. And I thought that was so tragic. So maybe it isn't that the mother isn't likable. The, the book is about belonging for the mother that she had and then abruptly lost. And I thought, oh. And I saw it completely different. I saw that it was the mother that she had was a terrifying person. And that um, in, the, in, the, in the museum scene, there was the, well, maybe she, she's left me altogether, and mm -hmm. I'll have another home. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she'll come back and make a scene. Or, and it was that horrible angst of be, living with someone with such a, a disconnect well, with she reality. Well, she me or me. Exactly. But, but that's the schizo schizophrenia of yep. child and parent in any case. Yes. You know, we love and hate our parents. But now schizophrenia gives it a whole different dimension. A whole different, and I have been exposed to people who were schizophrenic. And it is it is a terrifying thing to be around somebody that you have. And you never know which one you're going to get. You don't know who you're going to be with that yeah. day. Yes. And it can change that quick. Yes. And so it's so very, very difficult. Did, did you have, I mean, I really did have trouble comprehending, I mean, Almost every page is, I feel guilty, I feel guilty, I feel guilty. And I just, I didn't get it. I really didn't I, get I it. I did get that. I really did understand. And maybe it's because of the way that I was raised in my family that we, we deal with guilt a lot. <laughs> 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 you know, it was, there was a what lot of guilt. What good mother guilt. <laughs> and and that, that, that guilt of being healthy when your mother is sick, yes. the guilt of being um, afraid of your mother, the guilt of being, I really, I understood what she was saying and could really empathize with her that she was, she was afraid of her mother and felt guilty for being afraid of her mother. She was guilty for not wanting to love her, to be with her mother, even though she loved her. I mean, it's obvious. Of course she loved she her. She loved her mother, but she was afraid. I mean, really afraid well, of this we woman. we love the idea of parents. I mean, I think that's almost prenatal. Mm -hmm. And when that's pulled away, that's a terrible tragedy. Yes. And, and so that's what's going on here. It's not so much that she loves this mother, but she wants a mm. mother. Yes. And she didn't have a father, so that... That's right. She that might all... Right. Although she did have a grandparent, and... Ooh, both of them mm. were too... <laughs> pretty <Okay>. dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. fact, I don't know whether you picked up, or, or I just have an evil mind, but I had the feeling the grandfather wasn't quite kosher. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's also that whole idea of um, not only the dysfunctionality of this family, but because there's no father that she can run to, and she kept trying to find him too, but of not having that loving relationship that maybe she saw with other people. Yeah, of course she She did. must have, because it sounds like she came out of the whole mess actually a pretty well-grounded human being that other people wanted to be around. Yes. And yes. there had to be a reason for that. There's, and I didn't get the reason in this. I just didn't get the reason of how... And I can see what you're talking about, because she didn't explain how she got her sensibility I know that they're probably... And her sister, too. And her sister was sensible. Well, but sometimes the yeah. absence of something makes you or breaks you. But you have a, you have a model. There's a model mm -hmm. somewhere in your life. Well, she had a grandmother who wasn't the greatest, but there was that. But you also have a model around you. you okay. You're a kid, you go to school, you see other people's parents. You create, yeah. a, if you you're create lucky. a fantasy right. family. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, we've got to wrap it up. And uh, so the way that we do this is we vote, and a red one means read the book, and a blue one means give it a miss. And Pam, you get to go first. Oh, I would really recommend that people read it, especially <laughs> if they don't have anybody 
who's um, mentally ill in their family, they probably should read it and find out what it feels like. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I didn't say this during our discussion, but it is also beautifully written. Yes. It's a red for me. And I also think that it's a great introduction to the problem, and, uh, and it's a growing problem, and we don't have any health care that takes care of it. Yes. That's right. A book for everyone to read to survive the 21st century. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and um, we'll see you next time.